Do you regard black magic as being purely fictitious, or is there some truth in it? Some truth? 100% truth. There is nothing fictitious about black magic, in any way whatever. It is a fact. It is a fact uh, which has existed for several thousand years. I mean, when we talk about black magic, we are talking about Satanism, necromancy, alchemy, witchcraft, the worship of uh, Satan. Right, so let's talk about this Balenciaga business, because stuff has been popping off this past week, and a lot of hands have been revealed. Some of you may be aware of what's happened, and some of you may have missed it. So I thought I would bring it up for a discussion because it is extremely relevant as to what we have been discussing and what I've been teaching you guys about recently. Now, Balenciaga recently released a new ad campaign and these ad campaigns included children. And the reason why people have been gunning for Balenciaga is because these children were holding teddy bears that were wearing some sort of BDSM or bondage gear. Of course, people have seen this and it's caused a commotion. They're probably seeing how far they could push it with this, to be honest. We're so tacit and we comply with so much of the stuff they do, especially to our children, that they probably just ran this as a little experiment to see how far they could push the boat out. Obviously, it hasn't worked. People have been up in arms and there has been some serious backlash. And even the likes of Kim K and Bella Hadid have chimed in, voicing their concerns and distancing their self from what's happened. Now, I wanted to do this video just to take a look at these pictures and point out some things that I think should be discussed, especially if you are a long time watcher of this channel because you will notice a lot of symbols here that we have spoken about before. Right, so let's have a look at these pictures. As you can see here, the teddy bears are clearly dressed in some kind of bondage BDSM gear. I'm not entirely sure how this is even relevant to the picture, but Regardless of however you look at it, this is clearly inappropriate and evidently nobody else thought this was okay because they received public backlash. Anybody who does think this is okay, then you should just probably get off my channel, to be honest, I'm going to be real. On top of these bears, um, these pictures are literally rife with symbolism. All symbols that we have spoken about before and symbols that should not be unfamiliar to you. For instance, in this image here, we can see that there is a white rabbit along with the dragon print on the back of the wall. What do we know about white rabbits and dragons? We know that white rabbits are synonymous with MK uh, in respect to Alice in Wonderland. And we know that dragons are a direct head, are a direct head nod to J.K. Reptilians. Now, if you look at the bottom part of the photo, where you see you have the chains, you have a double B on the chain for Balenciaga, but this double B has been made to look like a butterfly on the end of the chain. And we all know the Monarch Butterfly, a classic sign for programming. We've spoke a lot about that. And in the previous video, I've mentioned how the Monarch Butterfly actually resembles the shape of the sphenoid bone in the brain. However, I have recently come to discover that the butterfly shape also resembles a child's pelvis and that is why they choose it because that is how they fracture that is one of the main ways how they fracture these children so those are the type of people we're dealing with here the chain in the middle looks exactly like a choker which again is another symbol for mk celebrities love wearing chokers they've got the men and the women wearing them now it's literally one of the most obvious signs for somebody that's under control now, a very good friend of mine pointed out that uh, these rings at the bottom are the... Now, a very good friend of mine also pointed out the rings at the bottom and stated that maybe the company is offering diamonds for sale, which would mean the full spectrum of things available to the buyer. Uh, things like bondage or sexual stuff, uh, child, child transport, or even turning the children into diamonds. And if you know about presidential kitten programming, then you know diamonds are used as a signal for that. And this is what V is talking about here. And I'm going to take this opportunity to tell you all quickly that you should go and read V's work. Um, because her blog posts are second to none and I've read every single one of them. And there is an astounding amount of knowledge in there. So do go and visit Lifting the Wall because you will learn a lot. I can assure you, I will leave the link in the description. Now, there is another picture that we're going to talk about. And this one really is where it gets a little sh i mean i found the last one strange enough to be honest but this one is sort of overkill and it's honestly the reason i'm making the video um the amount of mk signaling in this photo is absolutely absurd 
okay so of course we have the bdsm doll in the bottom corner that we can see there we have the white rabbit again to the right of the photo both symbols that we saw in the previous one however in this image we have the rainbow here on the right but we should all know about the rainbow by now i've spoken about that um, multiple multiple times in my mk videos especially with um, the wizard of oz okay and what do you know you have red shoes kids wearing red shoes if you've seen my video on red shoes and ninth circle satanism then this should already be ringing alarm bells off in your head there is a reason that there is a rainbow there there is a reason that the child is in red shoes and there is a reason that he's standing on top of a mat that again looks like that double b butterfly that they love to have as their sigil and remember i told you before that the b is just a 13 so if you pull apart a b it's the 13 remember there's 13 bloodline families it's, it's one of the most favored occult numbers and as for the animal well the b operates under a hive mind and the vast majority of programming that is done wide scale programming like mass programming not talking about on individuals here the vast majority of mass programming that is done is more or less hive mind programming um but what's more important is that when we look into a if we look into a beehive we actually see the same six-sided honeycomb shape that forms in our brains when uh, we've been subjected to extreme torture uh, the brain forms these amnesiac barriers around these experiences which eventually formulates to shape like these honeycomb <clears throat> sections in our brain uh, and each experience is attached to a personality okay and the, each experience and each uh, section can be programmed so the result is that the brain ends up looking very similar to one of these honeycombs with these separate hexagonal shapes okay each hexagonal shape coinciding with a different experience and a different personality and when i mean different experience i mean different traumatic experience uh there is one more thing that i forgot to mention as well in the back of this photo you can see this strange red looking devilish entity appearing from what looks like a portal there are a lot of symbols in these photos uh, okay um and this entity one makes a lot of sense when you realize that they've actually told you the entity that they're worshiping in this photo what you need to do is you need to look down here at what looks like a tape some tape or a belt because as you can see b a a l what have they done they've changed balenciaga with one a to balenciaga with two a's balenciaga yeah highlighting that bow letting you know who they're worshiping yep i mean they're, they they're telling you to your face there is absolutely no reason why that would be changed other than what we already know and why is that the only letter on show it's like they've purposely showed you they've put two a's there so you you can imply the rest i mean i wish i was making this stuff up i really do but sometimes it gets to a point where you really just need to take a step back and evaluate what's going on because this stuff is more real than you could ever imagine and i wish i was making this up i, I really do people but at the end of the day i'm not and i've been speaking about how bow or buell whatever you want to call him or them whatever you want to call it has had dominion over this earth now for quite a while and if you don't believe me i mean you can just turn on your tv and see the proof i'm going to be honest with you give me one logical explanation as to why they've added an extra a please go in the comments and tell me because i'm personally at a loss this is just mockery at its finest people think pizzagate was a joke you know i really hope people don't let this one go as easy now another photo they uploaded features a handbag on a pile of documents it seems innocent Oh, it's a nice bag. Um, only people have zoomed in and discovered that one of the documents is a printout of something to do with Ashcroft vs Free Speech Coalition, the 2002 US Supreme Court ruling that struck down a section of the Child Pornography Prevention Act that ruled that fake child porn is protected speech. That is literally the document that's on the table referring to this case. Yes, so this is no joke business. This needs an explanation, surely. It cannot be a coincidence that an ad campaign with very young children holding teddies also makes reference to a court ruling that said not all sexualized depictions of kids should be illegal. Somebody involved in this clearly knew exactly what they were doing. 
Now, I mean, even if you don't have a clue about occult symbolism and how these demons like to communicate with each other, I sincerely hope you find it highly inappropriate and seriously twisted to give kids teddy bears dressed in BDSM gear and in the same shoot make reference to court cases that dealt with CP. I mean, seriously, we don't even have to go the whole nine yards with the esoteric symbolism that's all behind the pictures. These two points alone say enough. Have you ever asked yourself what Balenciaga means? It's, the word is literally Latin for do what you want. Now, does that sound familiar? Do what you want. Do as thou wilt. The, the most fundamental principle in Crowley's philosophy. And we know that his system of philema runs so deep in Hollywood and the entire entertainment industry. So you better believe that the fashion industry is down with it too. That's why you have all these A-listers, I mean all these Alistas running round trying to control your fragile mind into buying this overpriced nonsense. I mean come on people, they literally have a brand whose logo is MK. I mean think people, please, please. And one more thing, okay, the guy that made Balenciaga, his name is Cristobal Balenciaga. Listen to the name, people. Cristobal or Cristobal, however you say it. I don't know. I don't really care. But are you having a fucking laugh? Split that name up. It couldn't be any more obvious. Christ O Bow. I literally, three weeks ago, released a video where at the end I was telling you how they run a similar narrative and ritual with the Baphomet. Uh, run a similar narrative and ritual with the Batman movie with Christian Bow and Michael Caine. Now we have Christ Obao, who made Balenciaga. Guy, this, I mean, it, it gets to a point where once you you spot it, it, it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And just to put the cherry on top, because that's how I move, Christ Obao, Balenciaga is a double match with Ritual Sacrifice and Comet Ping Pong. I could honestly turn this video off here because that's that's enough for me. Ritual Sacrifice and Comet Ping Pong, double match with the founder of Balenciaga, Christo Bao. Honestly, shit is ridiculous. Now, I wish I was done, I really do, but I'm not. I'm not. There's another picture we need to talk about, one that's received a lot less attention. Uh, right, so here we have an image of a woman sitting in an office, seeming pretty innocent, right? Wrong. Here we can clearly see displayed on the table the black cube of Saturn. I mean, they didn't even try to hide this. They were just like, yeah, put that black cube straight in the middle. We'll just let them know straight up. But what's even more is that if we look a little to the right and zoom in, we can see the top book, one they've made clearly visible, is Michael Borrowman, and it's called Fire from the Sun. Now, look, I'm not even going to show you all of the pictures in this book because I can appreciate that some of you find this shit honestly too much to look at and it weighs heavy on your heart and you don't want to be exposed to it. However, this does not change the fact that this book is there, clearly visible in the photo. So I have to do my part and tell you about it. All I'm going to do is show you the front cover. All you need to see. This is the front cover. Why the f why why is that there? Please why? Why? I'm going to leave a link in the description if you want to go and look at the rest of the photos from the book. It's not pleasant, I'm going to be honest with you, but it's very similar, very eerily similar to the whole Mariana Abramovich, Pizzagate, John Podesta, that whole art thing that was going on. You know, if you watch the Malfi Buddha series about art and embassies and how a lot of it's to do with child trafficking, these motherfuckers hide in plain sight with this art stuff, okay? Go and look at the link in the description. Look at the images from the book and please come back, leave me a comment and tell me why this book is there. Please, I'm begging you to give me a logical explanation because it's not like I'm out here wanting this stuff to be going on. Now, why is this and this in the picture after we've just seen this. I mean, doesn't all this evidence add up to one thing? Uh, why is this book there? I think we know. Why is there a black cube there? I think we know. Why have they added another A? I think we know. Also, notice this artist's name is Michael. 
Again, in my last video, what have I told you about the name Michael? Michael is Moloch. Yeah, Michael is Moloch. Moloch is the deity of child sacrifice. And the imagery makes sense now. Balenciaga out here showing us the work of Moloch. Both deities directly related to child sacrifice, Baal and Moloch. Black Cube backs this up on the table. Because we know that the cult of Baal or the cult of Bell is directly tied to the Black Cube. And before I turn this off, I did a little bit more looking around Balenciaga, much to my disgust. And look who's been tied to their casting system before. Oh, look, it's Rachel Chandler. Now, I, I appreciate some of you might not know who Rachel Chandler is. I'm not going completely deep on who she is in this video because it's kind of, it's, it would just get too long. But you can research her on your own time. I'm just going to let you know this. Chandler, that second name is a code. Chandler means child handler. Put a C in front of the handler, Chandler. C handler is child handler. Okay, that's why Rachel Chandler has been seen literally everywhere. She's got pictures from Puff Daddy, Epstein. She's got pictures with Rothschilds, you name it. She's got pictures with them all over the place. Eminem, I just find it absolutely no surprise that she is linked to this demonic organisation. I mean, let me just look at look at a couple of the pictures of the model, models that are signed to her. I mean, just look at the pictures of the models that are signed to her. Every single one of them look like they've been sub subjected to something not entirely pleasant. Look into Rachel Chandler and her history because this girl is at the centre of a lot of stuff, believe me. Believe me. And I made an Instagram post on my last my last Instagram before it got hacked talking about another Chandler that, would re that was recently had been brought up in the news. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the news story on the screen because I forgot, but she was moving with Maisie Williams from Game of Thrones and I basically put the pictures up and showed you how Maisie Williams went from this cute, innocent little girl. She's out here looking like a, like an alien now. Like, look, look at the difference. And then you see she's moving with this Chandler girl so you know who her handler is. So just look, watch for the names, all right? Watch for the names because, look, Maisie Williams went from this to this. Yeah, that's what these lot do to your kids. Trust me. Believe me, there's one more person I want to draw your attention to, okay? Lotta Volkova, who is a stylist for Balenciaga. Now, in light of everything that's gone on with Balenciaga in the last week or so, she's made her Instagram private, of course. That's not suspect at all, is it? Somebody that openly wants people to follow them to promote a brand suddenly making their Instagram private. I wonder why she's done that. But obviously, people were on that before and they've saved a few pictures. So let me show you a few of these images I found on her page. I mean, what on earth is she eating here? With a tag like Cannibal Lotta, I dread to think. I mean, she looks straight up possessed. And then this is another picture that was on her Instagram. I mean, <sighs> why is she a stylist for Balenciaga? Why are you tagging things Cannibal Lotta? Why have you got pictures like this? Can you, anybody, anybody want to explain? Or, I don't, but things don't look very good for Balenciaga right now, I'm not going to lie. Even from the, and I'm talking about from the regular, the average Joe's point of view. Last thing I'm going to show you before I lock this video off. Michael Borman has got another set of artworks called Black Mold, okay? Which just reminds me of Black Goo, to be honest. Um, and you can see some of these images here, these just hooded figures in all black doing all types of weird, grotesque, rich, ritualistic stuff. And it just got me thinking, do you think there's any correlation between this and this? I mean, let's be honest, in light of what we've been talking about, would you be surprised? You know what the saddest thing is out of all of this? It kind of makes messed up sense that nobody in the fashion chain of command stopped to wonder if this might all be a bit strange because the sad fact is pedo chic is everywhere right now in a world where we are saturated with images of kids in adult clothing when children bop along to pop and rap music that's completely sexually explicit it's not uncommon to see kids petting men as pups at fucking pride marches or, or laughing along with drag queens in skimpy outfits why would anyone bat an eyelid at a picture of a girl on a bed with a kinky bear? Let's just be real about it. And this is the way things this is the way things are going right now. And this this whether you like it or not, it's happening. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Pedo chic is one of the most worrying trends of our time. No, it's the most worrying trend I've ever seen. 
we seem to be witnessing a surge in the paedophilic sensibility. And this is not to say that everybody at Balenciaga is a paedophile before one of you come with your stupid comments like, and then uh, my uncle works at Balenciaga. Like, no, I'm not saying that, am I? Clearly, we're talking about from a top-down perspective. And no one's saying that somebody is a bad parent or a child abuser if they let their kids hang out with these braless trans women at these bacchanalian orgies of self-regard mixed with self-pity that pride gatherings have become now. No one's saying that, all right? But it does feel like uh, the paedophilic imagination, uh, the view of children either as sexual beings or as fit for being exposed to sexual beings is having a resurgence and I don't fucking like it. It needs to be addressed and it needs to be spoken about.